powder blue kitchen cabinets, wall-to-wall -wall green carpet, pink couches, and lavender hair. Buckle up, we've got a colorful story about the 1950s ahead of us. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel where we talk about vintage mid-century beauty and I am so excited to finally be doing this video about colorful pastel hair in the atomic era. I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but I just kept kicking the can down the road. Then at Susanna Vestige asked me to write a short article for her paper, The Velvet Gazette. And I asked her what she wanted. And she said, I basically write about whatever I wanted to, essentially a spring issue slash Viva Las Vegas issue. So I decided to do a little short article on pastel hair color in the mid 20th century. Beehive was a close second, but I'm still working on collecting all my research for that. So that will continue, but not this one anymore. I am too excited about it. It's the perfect time of year. Let's talk about colorful hair in the 1950s and 1960s. Got a lot to share about this subject and a lot of really cute stories and examples. Colorful hair like pastels has a long history from the powdered wigs of the 18th century to today. Adventurous people have adorned their crowns with unnatural hair colors through toning, dyeing, and wigs. It's been a method of unique self-expression and a tool of societal rebellion. I'm focusing most of my video on the hair color trend during the Atomic Era. To go back even further on the subject, I highly recommend going to watch the video done by Abby Cox. The seeds of the pastel hair craze of the 1950s start around 1954. There is some mention of pinked hair women being spotted, but it is in 1955 that it really starts to take off. The general public is startled at first, but some women catch on to the joyful spirit of it and it continues to be a fad through the rest of the decade and into the early 1960s. This 1955 article from a Montgomery, Alabama newspaper describes the scene well. Downtown coffee drinkers thought their drinks had been spiked this morning when they looked up and saw a girl with pink hair. Actually, they were seeing a hairstylist displaying the newest thing in hair dye. The young lady causing all of the commotion was Yvonne Moss, a native of Miami and a representative of L'Oreal of Paris. Miss Moss assured all questioners that the pink, blue, lavender, and other unusual shades were very fashionable in Europe. Eyes bulged out all up and down the street as shoppers stared as she passed. When we see pastel hair color in the back ones, it was often achieved through overtoning light or gray hair. Well, I hate to tell you this, but your hair looks like an Easter egg. Well, I, I had a little trouble in tinting class. My hair today was done the same way. I used a demi-permanent toner and left it on way too long. You are undoubtedly familiar with the phenomenon of the blue-haired little old lady. Gray hair can yellow with exposure to pollution, hard water, and sun and heat exposure. So the use of blue tints to counteract the yellowing have been in use for many decades. This rinse is designed to neutralize yellow in gray hair, but if you leave it on extra long or if your hair is extremely porous, you end up with blue hair, which is sometimes the goal. Lots of hair color brands in the 1950s had these toners and toning rinses. The colors included natural darker colors and light pastels for lighter hair. Ladies used them to counteract yellow in blonde, camouflage a few gray hairs, or give their hair color a little extra oomph. The lighter shades for blonde and gray often included pale blues and violets to counteract yellow. Also some beige and ash tones or something warm for women who wanted to be strawberry blonde. That was most of what you could find in the early 50s for options. It was in the mid and late 1950s that some brands started offering more color tone options than others, the biggest of which here in the US was Rue. My personal Rue story, when I was in beauty school, I had a regular customer that came in on Senior Citizen Day to get her Italian top styled. She dyed her hair red, but in between her colors, she would bring in her fancy full Lucky Copper and we would refresh her color in the shampoo bowl. Rue's line of fancy tone permanent colors and fancy full rinses had the largest color range that I've been able to find. In the mid 50s, Rue sold toners to add to cream lighteners or bleach that could create pastels. The more you added, the stronger the color. This ad from 1957 lists additive colors like brilliant blue, brilliant red, brilliant green, and brilliant gold that can be added to create colors like pink fawn or silver fawn. So expanded options in the late 1950s. Colors no longer had to do their own color experimenting with color additives. By 1960, Rue had a wide array of ready-to-use tones, quote, to give bleached hair gossamer pastel tones. 
You can still find these online from time to time. They are the original Rue color swatch books. So your colorist would use this in the salon to decide what was gonna be your tone. Let's look at some of the pastel colors. In the tones for gray hair and blonde toning to eliminate yellow, Rue carried True Steel, Silver Lining, Platinum Plus, Moonshine, Demure Mist, and White Minks. In pastel shades, you could be Shy Violet, Barely Pink, Silver Mint, Just Peachy, or Lazy Lilac. At some point around 1960, Rue expanded their color line with Party Colors. These more vibrant color options came in Tickled Pink, Mad Gold, Red Riot, Green Envy, Mauve Decade, Blue Mood, and Merry Apricot. Lampinol Life Light Hair Color, which later became Redken brand, also leaned heavily into the pink hair color fad. In 1959, this ad advertised fashionable colors, dramatic colors, conservative colors, all glistening with highlights sparkling with youthful natural sheen that is only Lapinal. Their pink options are listed as white pink, blonde pink, tickled pink, tickled pinker. In a later 1962 Lapinal ad, they advertised tints, pastels, and booster reds. I haven't been able to find more color names for their pastels other than the pinks, so if anyone has a color swatch book from Lapinal from this time, I would love to know more about it. Rayette Color Tress also had a wide range of toners that could be used for pastel hair. Here are some color swatch cards from around 1960, I think. Not to be left out, in this February 1960 Modern Beauty Shop magazine, a Clairol ad offers these color formulas for pastel blondes. There is a formula for extra light peach blonde, light peach gold blonde, light Tidian gold blonde, extra light pinkish blonde, light gold blonde with pink highlights, Champagne Blonde with Pink Highlights, Pink Champagne Blonde. This L'Oreal Colorel ad, which is a shampoo in color, describes 17 fashion right colors, including five Whisper Soft Pinks. Again, they don't list the pastel colors. First, a quick word from our sponsor. If you're a colorful haired girl, or just a girl who likes a little extra color, be sure to check out vintagehairstyling.com's Tintomatic Color Bobby Pins and Chromanet Custom Color Hair Nets for all of your colorful hairstyling needs. And now, back to our program. In my Vintage Hair Magazine stash, I do have issues that feature hairstyles done on pastel hair colors. This one is a pride and joy. This is American Hairdresser, May 1960. And when you open it up, here's the thing. Printing color was really expensive. Most of the interior pages of hair magazines were black and white. With the information provided in the magazines on what colors the women in the black and white images are wearing and the knowledge of what these colors would look like based on, thankfully, the color swatches. With the power of AI, I have attempted to colorize these images so that we can get a visual on what these hairstyles would have looked like. Starting with this hairstyle called Edwardian Flair from the May 1960 American Hairdresser magazine. The copy claims the hair color is just peachy from Rue Fancyful. I guess, yeah, I guess it's kind of peachy. It looks more pink to me. The hair color could have been altered for printing on the cover for editorial purposes. That pink really looks beautiful on that pale blue background. For fun, I colorized the interior image to match what the just peachy swatch from Rue Fancyful looks like. This color 1960 edition of American Hairdresser Magazine has an entire section devoted to hair color, including pastel shades. I again colorized the interior black and white images based on the color swatches from the hair color brands mentioned in the copy. This hairstyle called Winsome is quote, in the gentle tone of Rue's shy violet of fanciful rinse. The Lorelei hairstyle reads, Blush beige, a L'Oreal of Paris, a media pastel hue, reflects a note of subtle seduction. The colorization is based on this swatch. The color would have been a blonde with just a hint of pink in it. Very subtle. The Enchantress hairstyle? Her color is, quote, eye-catching and radiating charm. Rayette's color misty peach hair color accentuates the lovely dark eyes and lends an exotic and feminine allure. For the lady who didn't want to do anything quite as permanent, you could also get wig options at this time. 
As I mentioned in my video where I style a cheap Amazon hairpiece into a 60s updo, less expensive wigs were often made of mode acrylic, a type of plastic. This material can be easily made in lots of colorful shades, so while this hair color trend was happening, you could buy wigs in fun colors. This article from January 1962 American Hairdresser suggests young women get a white hair wig and temporarily tone it to whatever color they were in the mood for. Women also had color hairsprays as a temporary option. And that hairspray wasn't just for women. I found this article, basically like a bunch of British newspapers all published this same article. A boy without pink hair is a boy without a girlfriend in this country town. The teenage rage caught on last week when Barbara Aubrey Tight started spraying on the pink at five shillings six pence a shop. At first, the girls laughed, but now they won't go out with any boy who hasn't got pink hair, said David Grange, 18. He said he expected the craze to sweep right through Britain once the advantages are known. I agree. I agree, David. <laughs> Sorry. In my script, I titled this pontification. <laughs> so bear with me. As for bright hair color in the atomic era, superficially, people could look at the representation of the 1950s with its turquoise painted cars, pink couches, and lavender tissue, and think that pastel hair color was purely just a zeitgeist aesthetic. Inspired by the two-tone color all around us, like cars, houses, and even refrigerators, and that is true. This was a time of post-war optimism manifested into color in so many places. People familiar with design of the first half of the 20th century might chime in right here and say that pastels were popular colors for things like bathroom tiles and dresses well before the 1950s but the decades of the 1950s and the 1960s took it to 11. And there was another zeitgeist entering culture in the 1950s as well, a freedom of individualism. During World War II in the 1940s, there had been an expectation of women to tamp down overt vanity as a moral responsibility to society. It was a time of conservative beauty, encouraging everyone to put one's own individual wants and needs to the side as a commitment to their community and nation for the war effort. The 1950s is now giving women permission to be loud with their beauty. And the way makeup went from keep it conservative and tasteful in the 1940s with simple eyeliner and a red lip, the 1950s and 1960s brought us heavy eyeliner and bright colored eyeshadow. It was okay to draw attention to yourself again. And colorful hair was and still is an expression of individualism. In the personal stories people shared with me that I will get into about people they knew that colored their hair pastel, a common trait all these ladies seemed to share was a daring original personality. So I asked uh, some of my blog readers to share with me some of their stories of women that they knew that colored their hair pastel and I am going to try not to cry. <laughs> Elizabeth wrote to me, I work at a community center and I am the senior programs coordinator so I work with those who are 55 years young and older. Recently I was chatting with my senior Myrna who told me about how she was a flight attendant in the 1950s. She was explaining to me all the restrictions she had to follow, certain body measurements, certain makeup standards, and particularly hair expectations. Well, one day she decided she didn't care what the head attendant would say and colored her hair pastel pink. She said it was the best decision ever and how fun it was to have a color that no one else in her town had. She said, sadly, when she went back to work the next week, she was given an ultimatum, either color her hair brown or lose her job. She told me she wishes she was braver and would have left, but she really needed the job. So brown hair it was. She, to this day, thinks about that pastel pink hair. A common theme, a common description of these hair colors in lots of places is that uh, women would color their hair to match their outfits. In this case, by tinting the hair to match the stole and the flowers. One story told to me from a hairstylist who started his career back in the 60s is that the wife of the hairstylist he apprenticed under would come in every Friday and her husband would color her hair to match the dress she would wear when they went out dancing that night. 
Jackie wrote to me, so my mom told me that her and her friends would bleach the junk out of their hair Marilyn Monroe style, then use Rue Fancyful Rinses to color it to match their cashmere sweaters each day. It was Detroit mid to late 50s. I think mom and her crew were more of the quote, bad girl rock and roll types from the story she told LOL. They did a lot of very unfortunate things to their hair DIY almost always. She said one time her hair was the color and texture of aluminum foil. What would Brad Mondo say to that? <laughs> I don't know, Brad. Are you watching? Tell me what you think. Some of you may have seen this picture floating around online um, or in social media. Again, the hair matches the outfit and she looks fabulous. Um, so a Redditor posted it about her grandmother with this story and the original poster gave me permission to share it here. She wrote a little more about her. She was born in 1931 and passed in 2012. This is the one that I didn't want to cry about. She had a hard life from literally the moment she was born. She learned early on to find humor in everything and embraced being her own wacky self, not caring what anyone thought of her. She loved rock and roll music and loved to dance. In the 60s, she took on an extra job as a go-go dancer to take care of five kids at home as a single parent. Sadly, she didn't have pink hair at that time. In the 90s, when I was a kid, she was late 60s. She would dance to my Spice Girls music in her red satin bra. She told me she was the new Spice Girl replacing Ginger Spice. Her name was Old Spice. I absolutely love those stories and anybody else that has more to share about people they knew that colored their hair pastel, please leave them in the comments. They just bring me so much joy. Speaking of joy and pink hair, I'm going to leave you with some parting words from this 1955 article from the Montgomery, Alabama newspaper. No matter whether the people liked or disliked the sight of the pinkish red head, all had one common reaction, a smile. I hope you liked my video today. Please like, subscribe, all the things, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.